So, yesterday I found a way to deploy your entire Next.js backend piece by piece in a super performant and extremely cheap to run way. It was all just fun and games and me experimenting with different approaches until in the benchmarks I realized how well this experiment actually turned out to work. So the implementation finally works. The third benchmark is running right there in the background. And if this works, this is looking very promising. Now to understand which three approaches I just benchmarked there, we're gonna get to the results. Let's understand what makes a, in parentheses, Next.js, but this could be any other service as well, API fast. What increases performance, for example, in Next.js? I would argue the first thing is region. Where is your API deployed? That's one parameter we need to get right if we want to make a very fast API that serves user requests in milliseconds. Because one caveat that you need to keep in mind when you do region is a global API is not always the best option. What you always try to do in a fast API is keep your data source and the thing that fetches from the data source, which is your API, geographically as close together as possible. And in that, you actually accept that the distance between your user and the API can be much larger. So why is this important, this kind of architecture, right? If your API and your database are really close together, what usually happens in a web app or any app is that you make multiple requests from your API to your database and back to serve one request. Whereas the user oftentimes just requests one thing from your API and then gets back the response. So the closer you can have your API and your database, the faster your API is gonna be in the end, the less latency you'll have. And if the user is even closer to your API, like everything here happens in, let's say for example, Europe, that's great. But even if the user is in the US and your database and API are both in Europe, then the latency is still gonna be pretty, pretty quick for your API. The second thing that makes an API, for example, in Next.js really fast, is dependencies. And I don't mean a lot of dependencies, I mean the opposite. It's having as little dependencies in your code as possible. I don't think a whole lot of explanation is needed here. You only want to load the dependencies per request that you actually need to serve that request, right? How do we achieve that? We're going to get to that part. It's pretty cool. And then the last thing, of course, this is not an exhaustive list, but you get the point. These are really important factors when it comes to API latency, is having a lightweight runtime and also a framework that supports that lightweight runtime. So in my experiment here, that lightweight runtime is called Cloudflare Workers. It's a super cheap, super performant, right here, exceptional performance, reliability, and scale way to run your serverless functions, very similar to AWS Lambda that Vercel deploys to under the hood, or they also deploy to Cloudflare Workers under the hood if you opt into that in Next.js. Your code runs within milliseconds of your users worldwide. That ties into the region argument here. Where does your code run? Close to the user? Good, but it should also run as close to the data source as possible. And secondly, you want a framework that supports that lightweight run time, which ideally doesn't add any overhead itself. And I found that with Hono, a web application framework built on web standards that supports any JavaScript runtime, for example, the Cloudflare runtime, with a super lightweight regular expression router. Because not only does Hodo have first class TypeScript support, but the router, so basically the system behind serving a request, right? Imagine the user has an incoming request, routing that request to the handler, that's gonna serve it and then send back the answer. This should happen as quick and lightweight as possible, right? And Honu lets us achieve that. So that's the bigger picture of what makes an API fast. And now for the experiment that I made, I wanted to implement a way that ties into all three points that has region control, less dependencies for each request served, and a super lightweight runtime and router to serve the request, right? I experimented with all three and did a benchmark of three different approaches. The middle one is my experiment that I wanted to try out how fast I can make an API. And I compared it to two things. First off, an empty Cloudflare worker, a super simple, stupid worker that literally only does one thing, and that's this right here. It's an app.get. And whenever we make a request to this API, we simply send back a text that is even cached. And that's it, right? This should be the fastest possible way to run in Cloudflare Workers. It should not get faster than this because there is no logic involved, no database, nothing, right? So this is the perfect scenario, the ideal speed we could achieve at the maximum, no matter what we do. 
I compare that to my approach, the JSTAG Cloudflare Worker. If you're wondering, JSTAG is basically a way to run cheap, fast Next.js projects, like a boilerplate, a starter code that you can simply use to deploy your Next.js projects to Cloudflare Workers. And I compare that to a Vercel Edge function. If you don't know what that is, basically it's a regular Next.js API endpoint that is also deployed to Cloudflare Workers. So I argue we are comparing apples to apples here. This all runs on the Cloudflare lightweight edge runtime. And now let's see how the performance compares. So I compared three different things right here. First off, it's the empty worker. So the best possible speed we could possibly achieve. Second off, it's my JSTAG approach that I'm experimenting with right here. And then lastly, it's the Vercel edge function. There's also a Vercel node function, but that's not comparing apples to apples because this actually runs in the US by default and uh, I'm in Europe. And this also runs in the Node.js runtime and not Cloudflare workers. So I'm excluding that from the comparisons. And because making like one request here is not very scientific, I prepared a script that simply makes 500 requests and then takes the median, the average, the percentiles, and so on. I'm open sourcing the script. So I might not be a benchmark expert. You can look at the script. It's completely open source, fully transparent. I have nothing to hide. I want you to see the actual code that I'm running here and compare these three functions together. Um, so you can run your own benchmarks if you want. That's completely cool. We're gonna start with the Vercel Edge runtime. I'm gonna paste the link in here and that's gonna make right here 500 iterations and also give us the progress. So right now it's actually spamming the Vercel API and noting down each of the results that we're getting back. And once that's done, we're gonna get a table of results. Here we go, benchmark complete, 100% progress. 500 total requests, zero failed requests, the average latency being 48.3 milliseconds. That's pretty good. All of these are stupid API routes, just sending back a single payload, no database interaction whatsoever, with a median latency of 43 milliseconds, minimum 32, max 270. These are pretty good statistics. Now let's compare that. I'm very curious how my new experiment will do, right? The JSTAG Cloudflare Worker. And now, like, to be fully transparent, I've already ran the benchmarks once. I kind of expect something to happen here. Let's try this together. How do we compare in this new approach to the standard? standard Vercel function that you get if you don't really put a lot of thought into this. Let's see, let's copy over the API route that I have right here and paste it in. And that's gonna run 500 iterations just on a different API route. That looks a bit more complicated because you know I haven't gotten to that part yet, but it does the exact same thing, 500 requests, and it's gonna give us the results here in just a second. So dude, let's see how we compare 500 total requests Average latency 36.37 milliseconds. And where were we on Vercel? At 48.3 milliseconds. Okay, so that's like a, what? Average 36, for, so that's a 12 millisecond increase. That's like, like what, 20%, 25% or something? That's pretty cool. Why is there such a difference? For example, because Vercel adds logging themselves. They want to bill you for these requests. So they need to know how many requests you make. They wrap your function. Um, at least that's how I assume it works. And then add some logging overhead to it, which is like 12 milliseconds about in this case. Is this the most scientific research method? I don't know, you tell me. 500 requests I think are a reasonable amount to test with a minimum latency of 25 and a max of 224. So this is already faster than just deploying to Vercel. But how fast could we actually get? What about the completely stupid empty worker that is like the ideal scenario? It doesn't get dumber and faster than that. How does that compare? Well, let's try it. Let's run the benchmarks on that super stupid demo empty worker and see how it turns out. All right, 450 requests and it's about to finish. Let's see. Average latency, 40.03 milliseconds. So that is higher than the JSTAG one. I'm surprised. I'm surprised it should be lower. Now, I'm not gonna cherry pick this. I want you to see the actual first time I'm running this together with you. Now, I ran these like an hour ago, but I'm not gonna cherry pick this. I'm gonna leave this in the video because I don't want to distort anything. This actually seems slower than my JSTAG. That is unusual. I just want to run this again to verify because usually this should be a bit, like this should be the fastest one, right? Because it's the most simple one. The JSTAG also adds a little bit of stuff, but not as much as Vercel does. So what we really expect to happen, let's run, let's let this run in the background, 
is the following order, right? We expect this to be the fastest, this to be the second fastest because I implemented an architecture that I'm about to show you, and this to be the slowest because Vercel adds logging overhead that JSTAG doesn't, right? And let's verify that. Let's look at this example, average latency 38.55, and how much did we get on JSTAG? 36.37. I find this very interesting. I wonder why this could happen. Um, because network late or network bandwidth shouldn't be a big issue. So the order that we actually get right now is this. We get my approach as the fastest, which I mean, nice, but I'm a bit confused. We get the empty Cloudflare worker as the second and then the Vercel edge function as the third. Okay. Anyways, millisecond difference or not, the bottom line is JSTAG and this architecture that we're using is doing pretty good in this example specifically. Why? Why do we get these fast results? I want to show you that in code because the architecture from here is really, really interesting. I implemented this experiment yesterday and it works surprisingly well. And I want you to have some takeaways and learn this with me. So how it works is basically our backend is split into something called routers. This is a standard Next.js project with the difference being we have a type safe router system in here, which sounds abstract, but all that allows us to do is let's go into a front end component here, get or data type safely from the back end using a type safe API, like client dot post dot. And then we always can see the available methods from our actual back end here on the front end with full type safety. This is pretty, pretty cool. And for example, we can get the recent post by saying recent dot get. And what this actually does is it does an RPC, a remote procedure call to or post router, and it gets our most recent blog article from our database and simply sends that back to the front end, right? That's all that's happening here. It's a really, really simple stuff. And the router system allows us to now deploy each router to a separate Cloudflare worker. So if a request comes in for a post, we only ever load all the dependencies that are needed in the post router. And not, for example, the ones that are used in other routers, like the test router. These dependencies in the test router, these are pretty tame dependencies. But if there was, for example, Stripe in here, there's no need to load Stripe in the post router when we only need it inside of another router. You get the point. It ties into loading as little dependencies as possible. That's how we make this performance possible. And now comes the super cool thing that I implemented yesterday that I want to show you, this deploy command. As soon as I hit enter now, what's going to happen is our entire backend, all of our routers that we have in the stack are deployed to separate Cloudflare workers. Let me zoom out here a bit and show you the entirety of the console. We found two routers, the test and the post router in this case. We generate code dynamically for each router and then deploy each router to a separate worker by building it and then deploying it. We can see the size that each router has, the gzip size that's actually put onto Cloudflare and as well as the startup time, the cold start time, which is really, really low on Cloudflare that this API now has. Same as the other router, right? Each router now maps to a separate worker in Cloudflare. And that's how we make this so, so fast. If we get a request for a post from our database, no dependencies that live in any other router need to be loaded. And all of this is served from a super fast, super cheap runtime. How cool is that? So just to show you the behind the scenes, right? So what happens when we run the deploy command is there's a dist folder being created with the actual router content that uses Hono, the lightweight framework for Cloudflare workers under the hood and registers a single API route mapping to the router, right? We build this into JavaScript using ES build. So in the post.js, we can see the actual JavaScript minified that's output this is, you can see 26 lines of code, but really it's only eight. The entire thing is completely inlined and minified for, you know, best performance on Cloudflare. So it looks really ugly here. We have these weird like names because that's minified code that is actually pushed to Cloudflare for maximum possible performance. And that's all the code that this router needs to run, right? Or the post router, that was the code for the post router. All type safe middlewares, the regular expression router from Hono, the actual logic that handles your requests and serves them back to the front end. All of that is now in this bundle deployed to the workers, right? In 90 kilobytes here or 85 kilobytes here with a startup time in the millisecond range. I'm having a lot of fun just tinkering with this and, you know, pushing the question of really, realistically, 
how fast can we make an API? Like, like what's possible? What can I work on? How can I pack it into an open source tool that you guys enjoy using and then publish it as my own stack? Because I think that's, that's a really cool thing, right? We can all just have faster APIs. So during the experiment, I realized two things. First off, this approach of deploying code is pretty nice. It works. And the second thing is, API latency does not have to correlate one-to-one -one with developer experience. Usually, the better the developer experience, the worse the performance because there are more abstractions on top of the code. In the stack that I'm developing, I genuinely aim for this to be the nicest way to start a Next.js project. Is it currently? Probably not, but I want it to be one day. That's my goal for this. And I think this approach of deploying your code takes us a big step in the right direction. Now, if you want to roast my benchmarking approach or you have comments to leave on this stack, what you think about it, if you like it, maybe you don't like it, then please do so in the comments. And that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to see you in the next one. Until then, have a good one and bye bye.